Hi, I'm here with uh, Gary Hobson, a professor of English at the University of Oklahoma. Gary, we talked a little bit before, and you were telling us you've been around here for a while now. Uh, you've been here mm -hmm. at OU for 25 years, mm -hmm. give, or, give or take, and, and still going. Uh, I wonder if you could talk to us a little bit about um, studying American Indian literature here at OU. What, what mm -hmm. brought you here, and what have you seen happen uh, in terms mm -hmm. of the institution? Well, I've been teaching Indian literature at the University of New Mexico since uh, 1972. And was involved in the development of the Native American Studies program there, and I was a director of it in, for a while in the 70s, and then decided to get busy on my dissertation, finish up, and and uh, went lived in Arkansas for a little while just to get away from Native American Studies politics. <laughs> so we went to Arkansas, and, what? and I wrote out there those two years that we were there. And then in the meantime, I, I went back to UNM to finish my doctorate, and then uh, I, I, the job opened here, and uh, and I'd known Alan Veeley, had met him before, and liked him, respected him, and uh, I, and Barbara, my wife, is from Oklahoma, from the Lawton area, Comanche, mm -hmm. so we wanted to come back here, and we've been here since 1988, but um, I think one of the things that I'm most excited about is something that happened um, in 1992, and and my wife had a big part of this, mm -hmm. was the. Uh, Return to the Gift Festival that we had. We brought in hundreds of Indian writers mm -hmm. for about a five-day thing. My wife was uh, one of the coordinators of it, with, along with Joseph Bruchak. And then I became the, uh, the what they call the project historian, and we developed the Native Writer Circle out of that, uh -huh. trying to keep writers in touch and offering literary awards. And, mm -hmm. and until recently, I've been a part of that, and I've turned that over to youngsters like uh, uh, Rain Gomez, uh, Liz Toombs, so let them take it over now. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've, I've just watched Indian literature grow. Uh, for instance, when we were doing the planning for Return to the Gift, uh, they said, well, we'll have about 50 writers here, and this ought to really, and I said, well, there are a lot more, and I started just pulling out names, and we st started getting extra money. Uh, one foundation kicked in a lot of money, and we ended up uh, paying for uh, 225 writers to come here, uh, native writers. Uh -huh. And then we had another 120 or so that showed up. And then another 100 to 150 non-Indian scholars and writers, that, friends of Indian literature that came on their own. So it turned out to be really big. Yeah, I guess it's safe to say that that was in many ways a kind of catalyst for bringing American Indian writing uh, a critical mass, or at least an awareness mm -hmm. that there was such a critical mass. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, you could uh, interview Joe Bruchak, and I think he'd say pretty well the same thing. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, yeah, it. I think that's the. Uh, they talk about the Native American Renaissance. It began after Mama Day published *Housemaid of Dawn*, and the writers started coming out of the wall, mm -hmm. out of the woodwork, as the saying, saying goes. That I think that uh, the 1992 is uh, is. is uh, that's the second phase of it, and it just it, it really, uh, really mushroomed after that. Mm -hmm. Just uh, well, like probably the most well-known Indian writer today is uh, Sherman Alexie. Mm -hmm. He was there, and he hadn't published his first book then. And his first book was about to come out, uh -huh. right? And I think that helped him a lot, and he helped us. You know, and he just Sherman's been very good working with us for the Native Writer Circle. Recently, you showed me the the giant panoramic picture oh, yeah. of all of the folks who were gathered there together. That's and still less than half of them. Is that, that right? Picture. And the picture is 166 people. Again, as I say, they were. And it looks uh, like every uh, Indian writer uh, in the world. 350 or so there. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It had to have been a fantastic time to have been here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, too, one of the articles that I'm hopeful that we'll be able to read of yours is um, one that you published in World Literature Today about uh, the history of native writing in Oklahoma. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm going to spring this question on you. Uh, mm -hmm. Didn't give you a chance to prepare well, that for was, it. Well, uh, that's quite a few years ago. About 22 years ago I wrote that. It had so been a while back. Even, uh, I'd, I'd write it differently today because not that I would push anyone out, but just, again, adding many more. Uh -huh. you know? And so it's just like, uh, like uh, Liz Toombs now is doing work with... Uh, some Cherokee writers, uh, Julie Moss, Julie Gibson, and uh, and I'd, so these kinds of things uh, would be written about. You know, just it's still an incredibly healthy thing going on. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, the door is not anyway closed. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I think you're right, and I think that is indeed very heartening. Um, I wonder if you've mm -hmm. got ideas about why Oklahoma has been such a, uh, I've used the word before, a kind of cradle mm -hmm. for American Indian writing. Um, and and in, in your article, you start looking way, way back. We yeah. look at... Mm -hmm. um, well, that's that whole idea. Ridge. That was, uh, as my dad used to refer to Oklahoma, he said, ah, well, the Indian dumping ground. <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah, that was the idea. That's where they're going to put all the tribes, remember? Uh -huh. In the 1820s, I said, yes. well, west of the Mississippi, vaguely Arkansas, Missouri, you know, and then they begin to make those states, make them as states. And they said, well, a little further west, Arkansas, Kansas, Texas, and and so that's all dumping the Indians there. And then, it, then they finally, around the 1840s, created the Indian Territory, as you know. And so ended up, as you know, 67 tribes here, mm -hmm. uh, both native tribes as well as the removed tribes. So, mm -hmm. um, and they were coming in from all directions. It was all, wasn't always an east-west movement, you know, They're coming out of the northeast, coming out of the northwest. You yeah. know? Uh, and uh, they even wanted to move the Navajos here, uh, I, I learned a few years back. But, mm -hmm. They said, no, we'll send them to um, Bosque Redondo. And, and that didn't work, though. The, you know, that's the, the in long Mexico. walk. Uh -huh. Yeah, the yeah. long walk. But that, that, was the, that was the American solution. That was, you know, that was uh, old Skinnyena's idea, you know, chicken snake. Mm -hmm. uh, should I translate that? <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Jackson? Maybe yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. again, that was the, the, the solution, you know, is to put everybody here. So. That is kind of the template that people have, you know, for, mm -hmm. for you know, as, a, as, a, as, as you say, the cradle. Yeah. I mean, it's, yes. but, but in response then to that kind of dumping ground, we get this proliferation of literature coming from Indian Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's the idea. It's, uh, people realize that it's, uh, it's not just one voice, you know, mm -hmm. one kind of voice. There's many right. different kinds of because they're nations. We're uh -huh. Cherokee Nation, uh, Creek Nation, you know. Uh, in a Oneida nation, so it's just it, uh, that's that's the beauty of it, and and the writers illustrate that in their work. And to that, I think we could add that uh, we find writers like yourself writing outside of their own tribal experiences. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever wonder about doing that, writing as an OFO, um, being Cherokee Quapaw yourself? Uh, N well, I no. Well, for one reason, there weren't any ofos around. <laughs> <laughs> no one to raise an objection. Yeah, right? uh -huh. uh, but I and and I'm very pleased about the fact that uh, some Tunica Bluxy people have read the book and have given me a lot of good response on it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, so they may have some ofo blood, you know, all that. But uh, mm -hmm. no, I think that well, it's like we we're talking about in in the uh, seminar that I'm doing in, right now in, in American Indian poetry. There's almost like two ways of approaching Indian literature: uh, the tribal viewpoint, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, and kind of like what you work with, like looking at Cherokee things through Cherokee eyes, and how that is uh, advanced or not in the literature. Yes. And then there are other writers who take the Pan Indian view. Yes. Uh, and that can be just as valuable. Mm -hmm. There are others who do both. Um, uh, mm -hmm. You know, a Wendy Rose would be of the Pan Indian. You know, she rarely knows or talks about Hopi or Miwok things. Mm -hmm. She just didn't grow up knowing it. But she's very great, you know, talking about the universal Indian condition, you know. Uh -huh. Or Robert Conley, you know, right. very Cherokee view, you know. So, mm -hmm. and by extension, sometimes he'll deal with Pan Indian things. Uh, I try to do both. Mm -hmm. you know. um, tell us a little bit about what you're working on now. Uh, that's kind of confusing. I think I've got seven books going right now. Is that all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all, yeah. Now, I'm rewriting a novel that I finished the first draft of two or three years ago, and, and I'm now rewriting it. But I've got a, another group of short stories. Mm -hmm. uh, there are 12 now in, in various stages of completion. Trying to finish a book on, on Cherokee uh, writing and Cherokee, Cherokees in American literature that you and I have talked about. Mm -hmm. Uh, not so much about Cherokee writing, but how Cherokees have appeared in American literature. And uh, uh, a long book of poems, None of the Uzu and Yi, The Road Where the People Cried, you mm -hmm. know, Trail of Tears. <clears throat> Some of that's been published. And then another collection of poetry, just individual poems. And then uh, a, a big book of essays, which I was telling my class today, I said, it's turning out to be um, so far 118 essays. Uh, reviews and interviews that I've done over the years. And so and it's got well, about 540 pages right now. I keep <laughs> adding things to it. Uh -huh. And uh, 
uh, how many is that? About five or six of them. Boy, I, I lost track. Anyway, but no, <laughs> I, mean, makes, I work. I work on one for a while, then I then I get into another, and so it's been. I've been doing that for about a year, uh -huh. going from project to project, but working you know, every every afternoon, every night. Mm -hmm. So, this is in addition to the anthology that you recently brought out, uh, the one that you edited. Yeah. Could uh -huh. you tell us about that one? Yeah. Yeah, that one. Uh, that one was finished a long time ago, actually. I, 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 I consider it finished around 2005 or 2006 or so. We gave it to OU Press. And it's and called? It's uh, The People Who Stayed, mm -hmm. uh, Indian writing, uh, uh, Southeastern Indian writing after removal. So it's uh -huh. all these writers that have ties. And half of me gets in there because my mother's folks are unremoved quapaws. And, mm -hmm. But all there is just so many writers that uh, some of them don't have uh, federal census numbers. Um, Quite a lot of them don't, but they're of Indian background from the South, and mm -hmm. and that's been so little covered in not only contemporary Native American literature, but, but American literature, American history is kind of, mm -hmm. uh, we see these people a lot of times around and don't know them. You know, a Johnny Depp or a Loretta Lynn, you know, or Johnny Cash, you know, yep. Elvis Presley. I knew that. They have this Indian background, yep. that, but was that was stifled from mm -hmm. them when they were little, you know. Right. And, and I know hundreds of people like that mm -hmm. all over the South, and particularly Arkansas and Louisiana. But so uh, my two co-editors, uh, uh, Janet McAdams and uh, Catherine Walkowitz, we put together that book. Uh, there's uh, 55 writers in that. In, in my classes, I uh, have grown accustomed to hearing from my students that mm -hmm. they didn't know about American Indian literature, that they didn't mm -hmm. know that it was out there. And I had that same moment myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in 92, when Sherman Alexie was down here, mm -hmm. I had not yet uh, learned anything about it. I was graduating high school. Um, mm -hmm. And didn't come across American Indian writing until about 96. Mm -hmm. And it was a kind of watershed moment for me. Oh, you know, everything yeah. kind of changed. Uh -huh. um, and, and in fact, it was Alexie's story. Mm -hmm. um, this is what it means to say Phoenix, Arizona, that yeah. I first came across. Um, I'm hopeful that this sort of course will introduce people to American Indian writing. Oh, good. Um, uh -huh. and, and I wonder if, if you've got anything that you would say to uh, maybe aspiring American Indian mm -hmm. authors. Well, I uh, think that uh, writing happens right now. You just, you, uh, I carry little cards with me. I'm always jotting something down, then I put them on the computer or put them on my tablet. Uh, you don't write a book just in one minute. You're continually working on something, and and uh, just uh, don't throw anything away that you write. You know, you find 20 years later, you'll find a use for that paragraph you wrote hmm. that maybe didn't work in a story earlier. I mean, like the examples I used. Mm -hmm. uh, think of writing as something that's always continuous. You know, that it's not something that you do and then go into something else. It's uh, something that uh, that you're involved in. And maybe uh, keep doing it. Keep doing it, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, that's right. Yeah, good. All right, mm -hmm. very good. Well, Gary Waddo, sure to appreciate Waddell. you coming by. Okay, thank you. Thank you.